If my car had broken down, there would have been plenty of emergency food and water for everyone. If my car had broken down, it wouldn't have broken down. Well, if my car had broken down, the booby trap would have gone off, so we'd all be dead instead of sitting in this desert nightmare sweatbox bullshit. Tow truck will be here in 10. What are we talking about? How useless you would be in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. That depends on the wasteland. Right? Come on, we got 10 minutes. Gotta kill time somehow. We wouldn't have to kill time if stupid you weren't so stupid and learned how to take stupid care of your idiot car, you stupid. Don't blame me. Why? I'd rather you didn't. That's why I'd pick time enough at last in the Twilight Zone. Where everyone's dead and you're just left stranded and alone? Yeah, free from judgment, free from blame, free to read my books all day, assuming I can hold on to my glasses, which I can't. Uh, but that's okay, because books on tape. All the restaurants and stores are closed. How are you gonna eat? Oh, you're playing right into his hands. Surely there's enough Twinkies and spam and crap for me to survive. I'm not trying to restart society. I'm just trying to keep one person alive. Enough food for one guy. Rice keeps. Peeps. Peeps keep. Never have sex again. It's not a whole lot different from what I got going on right now. Man, I should have made that joke. God, the sun is ruining me. I live in California. The coldest it gets is 40 degrees. There's lots of houses around for shelter. I can raid a bunch of camping stores. Uh, I don't know how plumbing goes, but I could poop in a different house every day. And in fact, I'm gonna poop in a different house every day. The only downside is loneliness. And for a socially awkward guy, that's a blessing. My best friends are fictional characters. I can spend all my time reading about them and watching them, dissecting them and deconstructing them and just having them. So your idea of what to talk about when we're stuck out in the desert because your car broke down because of a shortcut you insisted on taking is how you'd never miss any of us. Look who's on board. No new pop culture. No Avengers 2. You never know how Game of Thrones ends. Oh shit, right. Damn it. Crap. Uh, I changed mine to The Road or Mad Max. Something where almost everyone is wiped out and I'll take my chances that George R. R. Martin and Louis C.K. are among the survivors. And you really think that you could survive all those rapists and murderers that always, always plague those apocalypse movies? What is it about an apocalypse that makes people want to wear leather and join street gangs? Is that what Hollywood thinks we all secretly really want to do? Yeah, I should have something for that too! Damn it! I know, I kind of set you up. Right? I have nothing! I choose I Am Legend. That's... Just more last man standing stuff, but monsters. <laughs> There's butt monsters in that? Well, they really took a lot of liberties with the adaptation. At least with I Am Legend, you have some level of safety guaranteed. I mean, if we're talking about your Books of Eli, or, Book of Eli's. or your The Roads. That can't be right. In each one of those movies, the threat of roving gangs of rapists is constant. With I Am Legend, you know you're safe in the sunlight. And if you can just stay safe at night, then you can spend your day slaughtering your enemies as they huddle in dark corners of buildings. Well, it's not very sportsmanlike. It is if you do what Will Smith does. Get jiggy? He spends that entire movie playing with his dog or building elaborate monster traps. The I Am Legend apocalypse turns your whole world into Home Alone. Yeah, but Will Smith actually finds a cure. You think you're just murdering monsters, but those are actual people trapped in there. If you really want to go monster hunting, it's always The Walking Dead. Ugh. You really want to live in a world that's that poorly written? Sorry, right. there's a natural limit to my impulse control, and we have reached it. I could home alone some zombies in The Walking Dead, that's true. Yeah, but nobody looks like they're having any fun in that show. Get your own stick. It, of course it's not any fun. The apocalypse isn't gonna be crazy fun. Okay, see, the problem with your guys' picks, though, they're all too earthy, right? If I am going to be in an apocalypse, I want it to be something where, like, it's not just society's crumbling and there's less gas, but, like, there's new crap happening, right? Like, um, Planet of the Apes, or Matrix, or the best one of all! Don't you say it! Waterworld! Okay, we need to strike some kind of balance. A little bit of sugar keeps them alive, but too much sugar makes them like water world. Like, if I'm dating someone, I break up with them, right? I'm not just gonna date a shittier version of that person. So if I'm saying goodbye to Earth forever, I wanna live somewhere that doesn't constantly remind me of the way things used to be. Well, that's true. One of the worst things about Walking Dead, other than all everything, is that it's too depressing. Those characters spend all of their time trying to get back to a life that they'll never have again. If you don't like the show, just don't watch it, okay? Like us. God, I, I can't, I can't not watch it. 
I started it. Like Zombie Land and The Road. I mean, those are situations where people are trying to recreate the lives they used to have. Right. I mean, if you're living somewhere that looks, sounds, and smells like Earth, you're never going to move on or adapt or evolve wicked gills. You're just going to play Earth the way kids play house. Constantly trying to build a new suburbs amidst zombies, following a sheriff around, not developing gills, being all shitty, right? But aren't they trying to find land in Waterworld? Just Deacon. And he's nuts! Kevy Koss and the pirates, they just sail around because they've realized living on top of Mount Everest? Boring! You'd be drinking your own pee. Mm. Look who's on board! See? Waterworld's the most fun! Because it's the only world that's not bent on copying the world of the past. And it's always sunny. And you get to have jet skis. And the pee thing that Soren wisely alluded to? You could be a pirate. You could be a dirt trader. You could bungee jump out of a balloon while a bunch of jet skis explode. You can do whatever you want. And that's good for me, because the bungee jump jet ski thing, that's what I want, and they have that there. Well, then why wouldn't I just live in a Zombieland universe on a boat? I could go into the mainland and get some guilt-free violence out of the way before going right back to my personal yacht. And who knows, maybe even Bill Murray would show up apropos of nothing. Well, in Waterworld world, world, there's water world. So we're all actually living 30,000 feet higher than we do now. And did you know there's a bunch of studies that show that people who live at higher elevations actually live longer because their blood gets oxygenated better. What was in that candy bar, Daniel? Is that like a take five or something? You know he can't eat pretzels. Double W is the only epoch where you get to be healthier than you were before the world ended and you don't even have to do anything. Why? There. I have depleted all of our resources. Surely we must die. Still got five minutes. You guys wanna do another one? No. Although that version of Waterworld sounds much better than that bomb of a movie we got. I don't know why everybody says that. It made $264 million at the box office. Oh, that you know, but you don't know that cars don't come with unlimited oil? The air is grittier here and it's bad for cars. Mm, my tummy hurts! Roll sound, roll cameras, and action. Hi guys, thank you for watching After Hours, and please subscribe to Crack's YouTube channel and make sure to watch our other videos. And Michael's just gonna sit here like a creeper and just smile at you as a way to urge you to uh, subscribe. I know it seems counterintuitive, but please do it uh, because we really appreciate it.